Welcome to the Beginner Guitar Academy podcast, a podcast where we provide tips and tricks to take the confusion out of learning to play guitar. Beginner Guitar Academy is a fast-growing online guitar school, taking you from complete beginner to well-rounded guitarist. So are you ready for your next guitar lesson? I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. Here's your host, Amazon best-selling author of the book, Learn to Play Electric Guitar, Paul Andrews. Hello and welcome to the Beginner Guitar Academy podcast. And in this episode, we're going to be discussing what would be a good guitar practice routine. Now, this was taken from a video I recorded, which you can find over on our YouTube channel. Go to beginnerguitaracademy.tv or go to our Facebook page and you'll see the video there where I basically break down that very question. What would be a good guitar practice routine? I'll talk about exactly what you should be having in your practice routines and give you a 30, a 20 and a 10 minute routine, as well as then breaking that down and showing exactly what is in that routine and giving you a few tips about how to practice the different elements of it. So go and check it out if you want to actually see the video again on our YouTube channel. That is cool. Now for beginner guitar key members, I just want to do a little bit of housekeeping. So if you log in to the dashboard, you'll see the link there for our next song workshop. Now in January, when this uh, podcast has been published, we're doing a workshop every week as we're in lockdown in the UK. So I'm going to give everyone lots of stuff to do over the lockdown period. So checking out there, we've got our three uh, biggest pop songs workshop coming up this Saturday within an, an, a beginner blues guitar workshop, five easy, awesome rock riffs, and then finishing with a how to master bar chords workshop. So hopefully sign there for everyone, beginners, intermediate, and then slightly more advanced, we'll see the bar chords as well. So yeah, check into the dashboard guys, you'll find the links and all the information there. But anyway, let's now dive in to this week's episode, what would be a good guitar practice routine? Hey guys, Paul here from Beginner Guitar Academy, and today we're going to be discussing what would be a good guitar practice routine. So we're going to talk about what you should be including in your guitar practice routine, how long it should be. So I'm going to go over a 30, a 20, and a 10 minute routine. I'm going to go in real depth and give you a few strategies as well to get the most from your time. So let's dive in, and here we are. What would be a good practice routine, or good guitar practice routine? So first we want to talk about what are your goals? So this could be as simple as you just want to play a few songs. You want to come home from work, chill out and relax. This could be you want to go on stage, you want to perform with a band. This could be you want to do an open mic night. This could be you want to perform a song to your wife for your 50th wedding anniversary. So obviously this is going to be very personal to you. But whatever it is, I need to get very clear what that looks like. This is going to help us to shape the whole routine, focus in on that goal so you're obviously heading towards it and making the most use of your time. So have a little think now, whatever that looks like for you, that is fine. But one thing I do want you to do, regardless of whatever your goal is, is make an ultimate song list. Now this is as simple as listing the songs you'd like to be able to play. This is gonna really help you set some milestones and set, again, a goal of where you wanna be reaching. Now this could be just on a piece of paper, you just write song title and artist, and you just write down the songs you'd like to play. Don't put off if you think these are too complicated. Maybe you've got a Stereo to Heaven on there or like a Steve I track or something like that. That's fine. This is a long-term goal as well as a short-term goal. If they're too easy, that's not really going to push you. So you do want to have some harder ones on there as well. Now, I've put a free download on here as well. If you go to 8guitartips.com, sorry, you can then download my um, little guitarist guide, which has eight guitar tips. And as part of that, I have put on the ultimate song list as well. So if you want an actual PDF you can download and fill out, then head over to 8guitartips.com and I'll ping that over to you. So write down the songs you'd like to play. Next, I do want to talk about songs versus skills. There's a lot of guitar players that only push songs. So just look, work on your songs. That's the best way to learn the guitar. And there's other guitar players that just push the skills. So you really want to draw your scales, your chords, your arpeggios. Don't worry about the songs. Now there is value in both. And ideally we want to learn both. We've got to have the balance between the two. We picked up the guitar because we want to be able to play songs, simple as that. So that is the kind of the overarching goal of everything, but skills make up the songs. So if you can't play certain skills to a very good level, you're not gonna be able to play songs. So having a grasp on your skills and the ability to be able to assess your skill uh, range or level is gonna help you pick the songs you're able to play. A lot of beginners fall into the trap of picking a song which is too difficult because they don't know the different skills that make up that song. 
suddenly they come really demotivated because they can't play that hard track, but they're not really aware that the skills in that track are just way above where they need to be. Then, you know, a whole different kind of level, if you like. So that's when we start thinking about songs and skills, not verses, we want both. But again, there's so many people that only push one or the other, we want a bit of both. So what are skills? Here are the seven skills we teach at Beginner Guitar Academy. They're in the G4 guitar method that we use and teach from in the Beginner Guitar Academy. And it looks like this, picking, chords, arpeggio, scales, rhythm, notes, and oral. Now, I imagine some of these you probably already know. I dare say you're not playing or practicing all seven of these. Very rarely do I find a player that does. <laughs> Again, your guitarists will focus mainly on chords because that's the main thing you see when you look at the internet. You're gonna type in guitar on you know, YouTube, up's gonna come a song, right? I need to learn these chords to rock that song. Maybe some strumming or rhythm as well, but that's two of the seven. So the idea is to be able to play all the seven skills because that's gonna make you a better guitar player. Now, one thing to think about here, which I always tell my students, is with the songs versus skills, a football player wants to play football matches. That's kind of the goal. Like a guitarist wants to play songs, that's our goal. But the majority of a football player's time is not spent in the matches, it's in the skills. It's drilling the skills, it's practicing those skills, because it's the skills that make up the football match. It's very much like a guitar player, it's the skills that make up the songs. So we're spending a fair amount of time on the skills, so it comes time to the, play the songs, we can play them very well. And again, we're gonna talk more about this later, but yeah, that's really what we're gonna focus on. There are seven skills, that's gonna make up the bulk of our skill playing. So what does that actually look like in a 30 minute routine? Five minutes picking or warm up. The reason I've named that picking is because as a beginner, you want the majority of your time on picking to begin with because that is what you mainly gonna do. The right hand is the engine. It's what drives the left. A problem I see a lot of beginners have is they don't spend enough time on the right hand and they're forever then looking backwards and forwards because they haven't got the coordination and they're picking wrong strings. Ah, it looks like they're watching tennis. They're going backwards and forwards. If you get a very, very competent right hand, you've drilled it very well, you've got the axi, then you find you don't have to look so much at it. You can spend the majority of the time looking at the, the left. So remember the right hand, this is the engine. This is what's gonna drive our guitar playing. So make sure you, know, you, you practice it well enough. Okay, then skill one, we're gonna do for 10 minutes. Skill two, we're gonna do for 10 minutes. Now that is just coming from this to seven. You can pick whichever skill you like, chords, rhythm, ear training, arpeggios, notes, anything like that. But the idea is every day you practice, you rotate those skills. So on a Monday, you might do arpeggios and scales for your skills. On a Tuesday, you might do chords and ear training. So you wanna mix them up. So at the end of the week, you've doubled up some of those skills normally because obviously if you're practicing every day, that's 14 times of going through skills, there's only seven skills. Um, but you get to the end of the week, you've practiced every single one, you're developing all your key skills. So you're developing it as an all-round guitar player, not just focus on one or two, you're doing them all. Really important. And then at the end, we've got our, our song to finish off with. The song is like the dessert at the end of our routine. The worst thing you can do is start with a song because you'll probably find you won't get onto anything else because song is the fun stuff. It's the stuff we want to be able to do and you just stick there all the time. So again, why are we doing anything else? And if songs are the fun stuff, because it's the skills that's going to make the songs easier in the long run. So yeah, you've got to spend some time on that to make the songs easier to do. Songs are just a collection of skills. So that's what a 30 minute routine looks like. Five minutes picking, 10 minutes skill one, 10 minutes skill two, five minutes song at the end. Then a 20 minute routine, all I've done is half the time we spend on the skills in the middle. So we're doing five minutes picking, five minutes skill one, five minutes skill two, five minutes of songs. But say 20 minutes, you might not have 20 minutes, you might have 10 minutes. So I've done a 10 minute routine. So now 10 minutes picking, three minutes skill one, three minutes skill two, and two minutes song. So there's a 30, a 20, and a 10, all with the same four components, picking skill, two skills, skill one, skill two, and then a song. That's gonna give you so much more bang for your buck. So if you've only got 10 minutes, if you're doing a focused 10 minutes, that is so much better than an unfocused hour. You'll find you get a lot more done. Sounds crazy, but it will. It's deliberate practice. Practice the things that can give you the most, say, bang for your buck. Now we could break this down further. If you've only got four minutes, you could do one minute on each of these skills. Even if you've got one minute of practice, you, you, you're waiting for your, you know, your partner, they're getting ready, you're going on a night out, and you've got, you know, you're sitting on the sofa waiting for them to get ready. You've got a few minutes, pick up the guitar, and just working on a chord change, you know, G to D for instance. How many times can you practice that? And you can even get rid of the right hand, just work on the chord shapes. We're just working the chord skill now. And how many times can I repeat that chord change? How many times can I really work that transition? Loads in just one minute. So it's actually enough. As long as it's really deliberate, as long as it's focused, you can get a lot out of just a little bit of time. 
So bear that in mind. It's easy to think, I haven't got half an hour. I won't bother doing any practice, but a little bit of something is better than a whole lot of nothing. So it's a little bit of time is going to be really beneficial. So a 30, a 20 and a 10, but you can break that down whatever time you've got. But as long as you're doing something very focused, skills and songs, mix them up. And then the next one we'll talk about is just the right challenge. So now we've got a format. We've got a 30, we've got a 20, we've got a 10. We know we want to be doing a bit of skills and a bit of songs. Just the right challenge is all about mm, choosing something that is going to stretch you but not break you. It's again, a, I see this all the time, beginners, they pick a song which is too challenging, it breaks them and they give up. And then that kind of is the end of guitar. And equally I see it where people just pick easy stuff or things they can already play and they'll just loop it and loop it and loop it and they're not stretch themselves, so they're not actually getting any better, they're just going around in a circle. So we want it not to be too easy, that it's not going to push us a little bit, it's not going to be too hard, that it's not going to break us, it's finding that stretch zone, it's finding that just the right challenge, as I say at the top there. And this is why it's so important to follow a method, something that gives you step by step of what you should be doing. It's been worked with numerous students, it's been tried and tested, so the stretch zone has been found. And that's what we've done at Beginner Guitar Academy. We use a G4 method. The G4 method is what I use at my offline school. I teach 100 students a week using the G4 method. There is 50 of us teachers across the world doing exactly the same, teaching thousands of students a week. We have worked on this method to make it the best method we can, but it's from um, from testing with actual students that this has come about. So G4 method is amazing. That's why I use it in my schools, online and offline. <laughs> online being beginning to talk me, offline G4 Guitar Ashford. Um, so obviously, I think that's an amazing method. So beginnerguitarcomy.com will show you what to put in your practice routine, what you should be filling your time with. So make sure you're following method. If it's with us, if it's with someone else, brilliant, but you know, have something focused and something deliberate to practice, not just random YouTube videos you're pinging around. Make sure you've got this you know, leveled out so you've got actually a structured system. Okay, so now I want to dive a bit more. We know the skills versus songs. We know about a 20, uh, sorry, 30, 20 minute and 10 routine, but what is actually going to go in that? Let's go into a bit more detail now. So picking, I, we're going to look at exercise one to exercise five. For scale, I've picked the G major scale. For chord, we're going to do a D chord. And the song we look at is Knocking on Heaven's Door. So this is actually class 14 from our 15 classes that map out level one of our course, level one of the G4 method. So as you go through those 15 classes, this is kind of what they look like. I break it down into those ideal kind of routines to show you what you're going to practice. You then work through with it. But let's go down a bit more because um, you probably don't know what exercise one and five is for picking. So here is exactly what they are. So picking one is just down up picking on string six. This alternate picking, you might know that as. Exercise two is outside picking. So we're picking the outside of string one then the outside of string two. Down and up, so now we're working on changing strings, the coordination. Exercise three is inside picking, up on string one, down on string two. And I'm saying string one, sorry. String six, string five. So up on string six, down on string five. So we call inside picking, playing the inside of the strings. Then we've got just same direction twice. So we're doing down string six, down string five. Then exercise five, up on string five, up on string six. So two ups. The importance of these five exercises is you're gonna find them in basically any song that you want to play. You're gonna be using these combination of picking strokes, be it two downs, be it two ups, be it down up, be it up down, whatever it is. So for instance, if I take a riff, Let's take walk this way. If I break down walk this way, I'm doing pick an exercise one, followed by pick an exercise two. So I'm picking the A string down, up, down, then up on the D string. So that's pick an exercise two, down then up. So if I've drilled these exercises enough, I'm also gonna play that pretty easily because my right hand's really drilled that. So then all I've got to focus on is the left. And I see that, oh, that's just a E blues scale. Beautiful, again, skills. If we get these skills in place, it makes learning songs so much easier. But they're the five picking exercises. Drill those, again, five minutes of your practice routine, just doing your picking, really blitzing these, and oh man, you could be rocking it. And exercise one to five, this is quite a high level class in, in class 14, so then what I do is take those, move them around, so there's exercise one, just playing across all six strings, using a metro, two e and a, three e and a, four e and a, I'm doing 16th notes, a bit mean, so we go one and two and three, so do it to eighths. So down a little bit. 
But the idea is you're drilling the coordination, you're drilling the technique, really getting habitualized with these patterns, but also working with timing as well. So when it comes time to play a riff, you can play it in time. So there is picking in a bit more detail. Let's look at scale now. So G major scale. Problem a lot of people fall into when they're doing our scales is they try and learn the whole scale. We've got the G major scale. Two octaves. We've got 16 notes there. Try to remember that is quite hard because there's quite a lot there to remember. So what we're gonna do is break it down to smaller bite-sized chunks. So you see the first little exercise there. Just three notes. The D, the E, and the F sharp. Then we gradually build that up. And so eventually we have the whole of the top, the higher octave of the scale. And also by breaking it down to smaller chunks, you can really focus on the technique. So make sure you're using a finger per fret. So same finger as the fret number. We've got good sound. We have got down up picking with the right hand to kind of facilitate the speed, get those eighth notes going. So this is all the stuff we want to work on. If you're trying to do too much to scale, you'll be spending all your time, oh, I'm playing it wrong, oh, I can't remember it, rather than really drilling down on the technique. So little bite-sized bits, build it up is the way to go. Now, if you're wondering why it looks a bit like a rainbow on this sheet, um, we color code the notes to make it a bit easier to learn them. So G's are always green, A's are always red, B is blue, um, and C is black. So we've given them colors just to make them a bit easier to learn. Because we do want to learn the notes. We don't just want to learn that that is, you know, second fret on the G string. We want to learn that's an A note. A note, because then we can see how it relates to certain chords and scales. Just knowing second fret on the G. The problem with that is second fret G is always second fret G. If we then learn that's an A, we can then move that around. A can be played in different places on the guitar, but it's always A. So it really just starts to unlock the neck. You know, that is really helpful. And if you need to do that from a very beginner stage, that's going to help. Start seeing what's underneath your fingers rather than just the, the fret finger fret as actually the notes. So A, B, C, D, E, F sharp, G, so much more valuable. Um, harder, but if you start now, layer that up, oh man, in a few years, you'll be rocking it. So there's our scale, there's our G major scale. Chord, D was our second skill, D chord. So first thing to do here, um, I teach the three S's, shape, sound, and speed. So we work on the shape. So make sure you know your D chord shape. So by that I mean just focusing on the left hand, taking the shape off, put it back on again, making sure you know where things have got to go. That is shape. Sound is the next one. That's when you can then bring in the right hand and start picking through. Start playing Everybody Hurts by REM, which is just the D chord down and up. Make sure each note sounds. If you've got muted notes, just keep picking that string and adjust. And by adjusting, make sure you're using tip of finger close to the metal. And there's no other fingers touching it. Make sure third fingers aren't hanging down. Again, if you're using tips of fingers, nice and straight fingers, you should avoid that. Once you've got the shape on your fingers, you know what D chord is, and you can get your fingers in the right shape, you've got the good sound. Now we're ready to move on to the next one, which is speed. And by that, I mean changing between chords. That's where these next set of exercises come in. So we do our G to our D, we're going to do the E minor, we do our D, all half notes, we do a little bit of a gap, then quarters, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So you can see we're now combining skills. We've got the chord straight, so we've got the shape, that is the chord skill. Then we bring in the right hands, bring in our strumming or our rhythm. We're combining, you're always going to combine skills, but the trick is to work on them in isolation first and combine them because it makes it so much easier and makes you progress so much more quickly. Um, so that's how we work on that. I'm bringing in the strum pans, you can see eventually at the end there, we get the eighth notes. Three, four, one, and two. Three, four, one, and two. So it's building up, building up, building up, building up. Again, that sort of stretch idea we talked about earlier, picking the right kind of level, the right kind of goal, building, building, building. Okay, then we come to the end. Our last few minutes, we're gonna look at the song where all this comes together. So you can see we've got the chords we just looked at actually. D chord is there, that was our main chord. But we then worked on changing to the D chord from other chords and changing to other chords from the D chord. So we've prepped up basically for this song. So when it comes time to play the song, you'll find you'll be able to play it a lot quicker because you've put in the hard work before. Now, when it comes to learning a song, the goal should be to play the song as quickly as possible. By that, I mean not the tempo. You don't wanna play it as fast as you can. I mean you want to be able to play along the music as quickly as possible because that's going to give you a motivation to keep working on the harder stuff. So simplify it. And we want to simplify it one strum per chord so we can start mapping out the basic foundation, if you like, of the song. 
two, three, four. So J and D and C. One, two, three, four. So if we can crack that, then once you've got the changes in place, then we can start bringing in that right hand, bringing in some more strumming, trying to get those quarter notes in place, the main B, and then we can start bringing the ups and bringing the interest. So one, two, and in 16th notes, getting a bit fancy now. The idea is really simplified. Build it up nice and slowly, nice and slowly. Chords are the foundation, everything else is just decoration. So nice and slow. And the cool thing about this song is we've worked through it in our skills. So we worked on the D chord, that's in here. The G scale, this song is actually in the key of G. So the melody is straight from that scale. So if you know that scale, we can start playing the melody from that. We can then even combine the melody with the chords and you can then improvise using the scale of top to make up a little solo. And really have some fun with this. So everything is coming into the song at the end, the chord, the scales, it all kind of uh, wraps up together at the end there. And that's kind of, again, the idea of the skills, the skills feed the song. Okay, action plan. So now hopefully we have a bit more of an idea of how to practice. What is a good guitar practice routine? So here's our three steps. So we want to set our goal. So set your goal, why you want to be playing in the first place and write out your ultimate song list to give you those kind of milestones along the way. Choose a method. So make sure you are using something which is structured that is slowly stretching you and not breaking you. So super important, that's gonna help you progress a lot quicker, a really solid method. And then stick to a routine, 30, 20, and 10. We got a routine now, but stick to it. Set some time in your diary and try and do it as many days as you can. If you practice every day, fantastic. Even if you're doing three or so, beautiful. But try and stick to a routine, try and make it more of a habit. Soon do that, you're gonna see progress, you're gonna feel good, you're gonna get excited, and we're gonna be reaching those goals we set at the start there. So set your goals, choose a method, and stick to a routine. And then last thing is pick up my free little guide. So if you've enjoyed this, I've given you a few tips already from this guide. There's eight in there and I've done a series of videos to um, accompany that as well to really help you put this into your guitar playing and become the best guitar player you can be. And there we go. So hopefully you've enjoyed this episode. It's going to be a few ideas of what to put in your guitar practice routine to help you get the most out of your minutes. So don't forget to check us out at beginnerguitaracademy.com com and take advantage of our one dollar 14 day trial and that's 14 days gives you access to the complete website just for one dollar the guitar academy system the different levels you have access to me so you can send me videos for feedback so our video evaluation system also the forums as well as our song library and archives of past live workshops and as well as future live workshops it's all just for one dollar so check us out beginner guitar academy tv don't forget to subscribe to wherever you listen to this podcast so you don't miss out any future episodes i look forward to speaking to you in a future episode so take care cheers for listening and i'll see you soon thank you for listening to the beginner guitar academy podcast we hope you enjoyed today's episode for more information, updates, or to start your membership today, please visit us at www.beginnerguitaracademy.com. Until next time, take care.